Welcome to On The Chain. You want to start with John Deaton first? Let's start with John Deaton. Man, that right. one, that kind of sets a beautiful tone. Let's do uh, it. That crypto is having around the world. Let's start uh, over. On, on the deep pen Okay, so he was on, he was, he's down here in Miami, not very far from where we are. And looks like he's in his hotel room, but he is doing uh, the Bitcoin 2022. And he's on with Charles Payne, one of our favorites uh, from Fox Business. Let's go. Penetration uh, that crypto is having around the world. I mean, there's unbridled excitement and it just, it just seems to be catching fire more and more each day, doesn't it? It does, Charles. Thank you for having me. I think the excitement and the optimism actually stems from the lack of faith that we have in our government-controlled fiat system. When you think oh, about nice. it, Charles, what is fiat it's a, today? It's debt. The U.S. dollar I have in my pocket, there's a promise from the government that it's going to have a certain value. The same government that has printed 80% of all U.S. dollars in the world's existence in the last two years. And when you're in a faith-based system, that doesn't generate a lot of faith. That's and true. I think cryptocurrency is, is the alternative to that system. So uh, this week, uh, the SEC chair said that crypto platforms should be registered and regulated like exchanges. Then this morning, I'm not sure if you saw the Janet Yellen testimony in Congress. It was nuts. Uh, all these lawmakers getting up and dragging crypto through the mud, associating it with Russia and criminal activities. I mean, it's, it really does feel like they're going to do whatever they can to derail this thing. Can they, can they achieve that? They could try, but they're ultimately going to fail. Sounds like they're threatened, doesn't it? Gary Gensler has waged a war on crypto. All right, for example, he says that the crypto platforms, the Coinbases and the Krakens of the world, these digital exchanges, that they need to be regulated. They need to register with the SEC. But Charles, the only reason they would register with the SEC is if they were selling securities. When they go to Gary Gensler and say, hey, I've got 70, 80 tokens on my platform. We don't believe they're securities. Which one do you believe are securities? We'll take them off the platform. Gary Gensler's response is, we won't give you advice. You just need to come in and register anyways. That's not a system that works yeah. because he wants to allow vagueness. He doesn't want to give guidance because if he gives guidance, companies can comply. He wants to engage in this regulation by enforcement. And uh, it's got to stop. As far as the FUD, the fear and certainty doubt about criminal and illicit activities, the FBI, the CIA, they've all come out and said they hope that criminals. Man, yeah, that's, so that's, that's solid, Chip. I mean, you fantastic. listen to that. Just it is well just done. outstanding. I mean, every, he hit the points, Chip, hits it out of the, uh, just out of the ballpark, straight home run, you know, going after everything, all the wrongdoings of the SEC you know, set that up perfectly. And as he's explaining fiat, right, you hear, uh, you know, pain in the background. He goes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so, it's not a promise, a faith-based promise. And they just printed more fiat than in the history of the world in the last two years. Not a good, not a good thing, for, especially when it comes to a faith-based system. Dude, it's, it's devastating. It's really let's, devastating. That's that yeah. Let's, no, listen to this, let's listen to the second part of this. Is, nice. We won't give you advice. You just need to come in and register anyways. That's not a system that works yeah. because he wants to allow public see. distributed ledger. You'd have to be a guy, the CIA. They've all come out and said go. they hope that criminals use the blockchain. It's a public distributed ledger. You'd have to be a moron to engage your criminal enterprise on Bitcoin or any of these other cryptos. Now, you represent, uh, from what I read, at least 66,000 holders of Ripple, uh, a decentralized payment platform that allows for secure and some financial transactions around the world. What is the beef here? What is, why is the SEC trying to shut this down? Well, Charles, we did something that's never been done. We actually went into court. We petitioned the court and said, we want to be named as defendants in this case. And the judge, in our opinion, said, in a non-family situation, this has never happened. Who goes in and says, sue us too? <laughs> because they effectively did. When the SEC filed this case against Ripple and its two executives in December of 2020, they didn't just go after them. They attacked every single XRP holder because yeah. they're going with this absurd claim that all XRP 
Mm -hmm. Even XRP traded in the secondary market with no connection to Ripple, that they're all unregistered securities. Charles, they're saying this despite the fact that for eight years it traded publicly in the United States. They're saying this despite in 2015 the U.S. government, FinCEN, declared XRP a virtual currency. And right. despite the fact that every foreign government, the U.K., Japan, Switzerland, Singapore, United Arab Emirates, every foreign Solid. government that's looked at this token has declared it a non-security. Yet our SEC is stating otherwise. John, I got to tell Gary. you, people love you. You've done an amazing job. And I can tell you just from your first appearance here, I can see why. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Man, that's Thank solid. you, Charles. I look forward to coming back hopefully one day. Absolutely. Uh, in the meantime, let's bring you from the fifth. Solid. Damn, first damn time right, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, and he just crushed right. it better than any. Uh, it, you know, I mean, we've seen a lot of guests come right. on. But, man, he John Deaton yeah. will be back. He will be. He might just be the resident illegal analyst almost for anything because he brought I the passion. So. He brought the fire. But I think more so what he really brought was the facts. He brought the facts, the facts. assembled them because these segments are short. They're not like our segments. Even our short segments are long. Right. So. Yeah. I'm I'm just I'm so excited, you know, to see Deaton out there on Fox Business, you know, with uh with uh, Charles Payne. You know, just outstanding. You know, the great part is that he didn't hold back. He didn't try to, you know, uh dance around the narrative. He came right out and said it like it is. You know, he he went after the, you know, in the first clip that we put up. <clears throat> Put up, went out after you know, the situation with fiat, then responded as to why crypto is the direction is inevitable. And I think even Charles Payne is looking and saying, you know, it's understandable at this point. It's inevitable the direction that things are moving in. You can't hold it back. So the big question mark out of all of that is still going to come back on Gensler is why is he so passionate with his enforcement actions? You know, why isn't he going to be communicative with? the projects with the exchanges and why are they taking you know such a direct harsh approach and so look at this right here here's some big news this is massive ripple partner to unlock 34 billion dollars in cross-border payment market in the philippines that's a that's massive a big, market that, that's a big number it is a massive market and you have a lot of filipinos that work uh overseas as well so a lot of money is being transmitted back home yeah so and, that's, uh, that's interesting Iremit, a non-bank remittance service provider, leverages Ripple's on-demand liquidity to process Australia to Philippines remittances, announced the partnership with Velo Labs to unlock the $34 billion cross-border payment market in the Philippines. Last year, Novati Group announced joining Ripple's global payment network to tap RippleNet's on-demand liquidity service. It has a nice ring to it, doesn't it, Jeff? We're starting to see this over and over so this is it right here yeah so digital nomad mad investor this is from this is from let's put it up on the screen here this is from october 17 2018 almost coming jim up on Rickards. four years so so oh, look jim, at that. yeah and i with a comment 